Ahead of unveiling the new iPad Pro 13-inch 2024, Apple has hyping up its Let Loose launch event as a different kind of Apple event and the most important iPad launch since the original iPad. And now that the dust has settled, it seems that the hype was largely justified. The iPad Pro 13-inch along with 11-inch model that was also announced is an incredibly accomplished and versatile device that, as the marketing spell that accompanies it makes clear, features plenty of firsts and best is the first time an Apple M Plus chip has debuted in an iPad rather than a Mac. It's the thinnest ever Apple device and it has the best screen you can get on a tablet. The iPad Pro 13-inch is clearly a product made by a market leader at the top of its game. It's a stunning bit of kit that's packed with cutting-edge tech and is a shoe-in for the best tablet you can buy in 2024 for its specs alone. But this also means, somewhat counterintuitively, that this is not a tablet for everyone. For a start along with the lofty specs, features and performance claims Apple is making for the iPad Pro 13-inch comes an equally sky-high price tag, $1,299 for the base model and $2,199 is for max specs model. That price immediately puts it out of the reach of many people and this is clearly not a tablet that's designed for just browsing the web and watching videos on the couch. The fact that the new iPad Pro is also a showcase for Apple's brand new M4 chip suggests to me that this isn't a tablet that's simply designed to replace your older iPad. Amazon Kindle or Galaxy Tab but a device that's designed to replace your MacBook and when put into that context, the price of the iPad Pro is much more understandable. If you are not looking for the top of the range tablet to replace your laptop and just want something more affordable for casual tasks, the new iPad Air 6 will be much more appealing and it comes with some neat features of its own. However, if you are after an accomplished with a kit that can handle some seriously heavy workloads including video editing and music production while also coming in an incredibly thin and light form factor, then the iPad Pro 13-inch could prove to be a very sound investment indeed. The body of the iPad Pro 13-inch 24 is made with 100% recycled aluminum and not only is this good for the environment, but it helps give the iPad Pro a solid and dependable feel without being too heavy. The iPad Pro is available in two colors, silver and space black, which is the version I was sent and which you can see pictured toward the, this review. It doesn't, however, seem to have the same clever fingerprint proof material found with certain colors of the latest MacBook Air, which Apple terms a breakthrough anodization seal to reduce fingerprints. And after only a short while, the back of the iPad Pro was dotted with fingerprints. The iPad Pro 13-inch 2024 has four built-in speakers along with four microphones. On the right-hand side, when you are holding the tablet in portrait orientation are the volume buttons and at the top of is the power button. At the bottom is a Thunderbolt 3 USB 4 port that can be used for charging and connecting peripherals such as USB-C monitors or external hard drivers with data transfer speed up to 40 Gbps. I still believe that the move from Apple's proprietary lightning port to the much more widely used USB-C for its product including iPads and iPhones is the right consumer-friendly move that allows you easily connect different chargers and peripherals. It should be noted that in Europe, the iPad Pro does not come with a charger, just the cable that reduces packaging and also e-waste as there is good chance that people will already have a USB-C charger lying around. The cable 
Apple provides is only USB 2.0 however which means you won't get anywhere near the maximum data transfer rates the iPad Pro's USB-C port is capable of. This feels like a bit of a mean decision on Apple's part especially considering how expensive the iPad Pro 13 inch is. A magnetic smart connector runs along the right hand side of the iPad Pro 13 inch and this is used to connect and charge compatible accessories like the new Apple Pencil Pro and Magic Keyboard. The use of this new smart connector however means the older Apple Pencil does not work with this iPad Pro. When it comes to the cameras, there is both good and bad news. The good news is that 2 megapixel ultra wide front camera has been moved to the right hand side, which means that when you use the iPad Pro in landscape orientation, the camera is at the top of the screen. This makes video calls much more comfortable and intuitive, and logging in via Face ID also feels easier. This is a design upgrade that many iPad Pro owners had been asking for, and it is very welcome. What is less good news, however, is that on the rear cameras, 12 megapixel f1.8 rear camera that can film up to 4K at 60 fps with a LiDAR sensor to assist with autofocus and an adaptive true tone flash, which Apple claims improves document scanning by using AI to detect when you are taking shots of a paper document and removing shadows from images by taking multiple shots. Meanwhile, the LiDAR camera is also used for 3D and spatial awareness, allowing the iPad Pro to scan rooms and identify objects and allows for augmented reality apps to cleverly overlay virtual objects in the real world when you are looking at the iPad Pro's screen. Why isn't this great news? Well, you might notice that the new iPad Pro actually comes with one less rear camera. That's right, the iPad Pro 13-inch 2024 and the 11-inch model don't have the ultra-wide camera found on previous models. While Apple hasn't commented on why it decided to drop this camera, it could be due to Apple's desire to slim down this model or even to stop the price tag being too high. Regardless of Apple's reasons, some users will likely be disappointed by this move. Apple, however, suggests that thanks to the combination of the 12 megapixel camera, the LiDAR sensor, and the M4 image processing prowess, you, you will still be able to take wide angle shots that look good. Although, while I'm not a professional photographer, I imagine the results won't be able to quite match a dedicated ultra wide angle lens. Apart from the new M4 chip, the most exciting thing about the iPad Pro 13 inch is its overhauled display. Compared to the mini LED technology of the previous model's display, the new iPad Pro's OLED tech offers much better contrast especially for HDR content and is much brighter too, with a maximum full screen brightness of 1000 nits compared to the 1600 nits of the 2022 model. I compared the new iPad Pro 13-inch 2024 and the 2021 model which features the same display as the 2022 one side by side and several differences were immediately apparent. Watching the same Dolby Vision 4K footage, the new iPad Pro 13-inch offered more detail in very dark scene with textures visible that are obscured by shadows on the 2021 model. There was also no visible bloom with the iPad Pro 13-inch 2024, which is where some light leaks from bright objects into adjacent dark areas. Comparing the iPad Pro's screen side by side, other more subtle differences were noticeable. For a start, the color temperature of the new iPad Pro screen is warmer than the 2021 models, which means whites had a slight yellow tint compared to the blue tint of the 2021's screen. This was with both iPad Pros set to their default display settings and with True Tone turned off. True Tone is an Apple specific feature that adjusts the color of the screen depending on the ambient light you are using the iPad in. By default this is turned on and for casual use I recommended you keep it on for the best image quality although if you are working on a project that requires color accuracy such as photo editing, then you will want to turn this off. As usual, the iPad Pro 13-inch 2024 screen offers support for the white P3 color gamut. The color temperature difference won't be immediately noticeable unless you turn off 
true tone and have two iPads next to each other and even then which display looks better will be a matter of taste. I actually slightly prefer the cooler color temperature of the older model. Watching movies both through the Apple TV Plus and Disney Plus as well as viewing photos and playing games was an absolute joy on the iPad Pro 13-inch 2024 with colors looking bright, lifelike and vibrant. As far as tablets go, you won't get a better viewing experience. The screen also comes with promotional technology that enables adaptive refresh rates between 10Hz and 120Hz. Depending on what you are doing, this means that scrolling websites and social media feeds feel smooth and responsive, and games look more feel great as well. The display of the iPad Pro 13-inch 2024, which Apple calls Ultra Retina XDR, is capable of lower refresh rates than its predecessor, which won't make too much of a difference viewing-wise but could help to prolong battery life when a fast refresh rate isn't needed. The 13-inch iPad Pro has a slightly larger screen compared to the display of the previous 12.9-inch model but is also has a higher resolution which evens out the pixel density so it's pretty even between generations at 264 ppi for the new Pro compared to the older models 265 ppi. The more pixels per inch a display has, the sharper and more detailed the image quality. The iPad Pro 13-inch 2024 uses some rather unique technology dubbed Tandem OLED. This is essentially two OLED displays layered one on top of the other with their combined brightness resulting in dazzling images. Some OLED displays can struggle with peak brightness and this tandem technology is an attempt to rectify that. It certainly seems to have worked as I had no trouble with viewing the iPad Pro 13 inch 24's screen in all manner of lightning environment even outside in bright sunlight. By effectively halving the button on each panel to display bright pixels, such OLED screens should avoid instance of burn-in, however static images can sometimes remain visible after they have been displayed, an issue that OLEDs can be susceptible to. During my time reviewing the iPad Pro 13-inch 2024, I didn't see any evidence of burn-in, although this isn't necessarily surprising as it often only starts to appear after many hundreds of hours of use, regardless I never worried about it either. One thing to note is that the due to the 3 is to 2 aspect ratio of the 13 inch iPad Pro when you are watching widescreen videos in ratios of 16 to 9 or especially 2.39 is to 1 cinema ratio, you will see two prominent black bars above and below the picture, unlike previous models which had quite different tech depending on the screen size you choose. With the latest 13-inch iPad Pro and 11-inch iPad Pro, there is no quality penalty if you go for the smaller version. Both use the same technology and as mentioned, they have different resolutions that equate to the same pixel density. This is a welcome change as it means that if you had rather have a smaller iPad Pro, you are not going to miss out on the visual goodies. You can also configure the 1TB and 2TB models to come with nano texture display glass. This premium finish helps to reduce layer and reflections and could be of interest to professionals who will be using the iPad Pro for a long period of time in locations such as studios which have a lot of bright lights. You can't get this screen take with the smaller capacity models and you have to pay extra 100 bucks for the privilege. Apple sent me the iPad Pro with just the standard glass, so I was unable to test out of the nano texture glass, but I have seen it in action on the studio display and it does indeed do a good job of reducing glare. Whether or not this is enough to justify spending $100 more will depend mainly on what you are using your iPad Pro 4. Even without it, I found that glare wasn't too bad thanks to the brightness of the screen, although reflections were visible. Overall, the display of the iPad Pro 13-inch 2024 is easily the best you will get on a tablet device and it even competes 
with the best laptop displays as well. That said, the dual OLED setup has clearly impacted the overall price of the new iPad Pro and while it's a step up over its predecessors, I don't think the screen on its own would justify upgrading if you have an older iPad Pro with a mini LED screen. However, the iPad Pro 13 inch 2024 has a few more tricks up its sleeve. The surprise appearance of the completely new M4 chip in the iPad Pro 13-inch 2024 feels more and more like a real statement of intent from Apple. No longer is the iPad Pro a less device than its Max, surviving on leftover components and carrying baggage from its mobile fast origins, it's now a fully fledged productivity machine that isn't just worthy of the same kind of powerful components as the best MacBook Pros, but in fact, now leads the pack when it comes to Apple Silicon, indeed the latest MacBook Pro 14 inch model comes with the now last generation M3 chip. This is a move that will no doubt please iPad Pro owners while possibly annoying MacBook fans and the result is a device that is far more powerful than any other tablet out there. By skipping the M3 generation for the iPad Pro, Apple claims it was able to create a new iPad that would not otherwise have been possible despite the M3's proficiency. This is primarily evident in the improved power efficiency that allows the iPad Pro 13-inch 2024 to be so thin while also supporting the dual or tandem OLED setup. According to Apple, the new M4 iPad Pro boosts 20% better thermal performance while offering four times the rendering performance of the previous model. It also offers 50% faster CPU performance compared to the M2 chip again according to Apple. I am a huge fan of Apple's M series chips. I feel that they have breathed the new life into Apple's Mac products. So to see a tablet with the cutting edge M4 chip is incredibly exciting. Of course, for many people, it's absolutely overkill, but for the first time, I really feel like the iPad Pro could be a replacement for my MacBooks, especially when paired with the new Magic Keyboard cover that essentially turns it into a laptop. While the M4 chip will no doubt be able to handle Mac OS and desktop applications with ease, and the iPad Pro 13 inch 24 comes with iPad OS 17, which is a lighter mobile operating system that doesn't necessarily mean the M4's power is surplus to requirements. Many iPad apps remain relatively lightweight in order to ensure that they run smoothly on all models, however a growing number are becoming increasingly feature rich and complex, coming close to the functionality offered by Mac OS desktop applications. This is certainly true of Apple's own apps, I got to play around with the upcoming release of Logic Pro for iPad 2, a fully featured DAW digital audio workstation app which allows you to record and edit music, it's the kind of application I use a lot on my MacBook Pro and when you have got a particularly ambitious project on the go with multiple instruments, you need a capable machine that can keep up. The good news is that based on my time with the iPad Pro 13-inch 2024, it clearly is a very capable bit of kit. And thanks to the M4 chip with its improved 16-core neural engine that's designed to handle machine learning and artificial intelligence tasks, the new iPad Pro can make full use of the new AI tools in Logic Pro. One particularly impressive feature in Logic Pro is Stem Splitter. This uses AI to scan an audio file and identify and separate vocals and instruments as separating tracks. You can then tweak the levels of other settings to remix the audio file. It's pretty impressive and I tried it with a few tracks both once I made myself in Ableton Live 12 and saved to mp3 and some audio examples provided by Apple.
Unsurprisingly, all the iPad apps I tried on the iPad Pro 13-inch 2024 ran extremely fast and apart from a single crash in some early software which is to be expected, the iPad Pro's performance was rock solid. Watching media was a joy thanks to the gorgeous screen and the included speakers were loud and clear. And while you'd want to use external speakers or monitors for working on audio projects, the built-in speakers certainly punch above their weight and are especially impressive considering the slimline design of the iPad Pro 13-inch. The App Store for iPadOS features a huge number of games and the titles I played on the new iPad Pro looked fantastic on the large OLED screen and then they run brilliantly as well. The M4 chip also brings hardware accelerated ray tracing to an iPad for the first time and in graphically intense games like Diablo Immortal, the results are very impressive with realistic lighting, shadow and reflection effect. Having said all of the above, unless you are looking for a tablet device that's powerful enough to replace your laptop or PC, the performance on offer here is, as I, I have mentioned, probably overkill. Certainly, for most tablet use cases, such as browsing the web and watching movies, there are much more affordable options out there. However, this is the first time I have seriously considered using an iPad as a replacement for a MacBook. And if more apps are released for iPad OS that take full advantage of the potential of the M4 chip, I might just be persuaded to do that. The iPad Pro 13 inch comes with 38.99 watt our battery and Apple promises up to 10 hours of surfing the wave using Wi-Fi and up to 9 hours if you use the 5G cellular connection interestingly while the 13-inch model has a larger battery than the 11-inch model due to its larger body the promised battery lives are the same likely because of the additional power demands of the 13-inch model's larger screen the good news is that in our battery test the iPad Pro 13-inch 2024 didn't just surpass those steamers, it absolutely blew them away. We managed 14 hours and 50 minutes on a single charge while connected to Wi-Fi when using cellular that dropped by over an hour to 13 hour and 13 minutes, which is still impressive and well beyond that Apple promises. New iPad Pro's battery performance far surpasses that of its predecessor which struggled to reach Apple's promised 10 hours in our review. This is likely down to the improvements in energy efficiency that Apple has implemented in the M4 chip compared to the M2. Should you buy iPad Pro 13-inch 2024? You want the most powerful tablet out there, the iPad Pro 13-inch 24 is an absolute beast of a tablet, you would be seriously hard pressed to find a tablet that can match it for performance. For the first time ever, I'd recommend an iPad instead of a MacBook if you are looking for a powerful device that's extremely portable and easy to use, thanks to the M4 chip you are getting Mac class performance. The iPad Pro 13-inch 2024 is a dream device for many creatives thanks to the, its gorgeous screen, powerful M4 chip and versatility. Pair it with the new Apple Pencil Pro Stylus and you have an all-in-one device that you will soon find it hard to live without. Don't buy it if you are on a budget. The iPad Pro 13-inch is a fantastic tablet but it's also a very expensive one. There are a lot more affordable devices including some from Apple that would suit many people better. You don't need the power for day-to-day -day tasks that many of us use tablets for, such as browsing the web. The M4 chip included in the iPad Pro 13-inch 24 is complete overkill, so don't feel that you need to spend your money on a high-end device you are not going to get the most out of. The iPad Pro 13-inch 2024 is the best tablet Apple has ever made and the company has clearly thrown everything at it. You get an amazing OLED screen, a powerful M4 chip and a ridiculously thin and light design and if money is no object, this is an incredible bit of kit. However, for the vast majority of us, money is an object and a very important one and it's hard to justify the huge price tag unless you are going to be using this as a laptop or desktop replacement for serious creative workloads. 
if you just want a tablet for relaxing on the couch and scrolling the web this isn't for you check out the new ipad air 2024 instead